This is my beginning algebra course. Today we're going to take part one of the final exam. I've said it before, I'll say it again. If you don't do all the homework that leads up to this exam completely incorrectly, you have no chance to pass this, this exam. Also, doing all the homework that leads up to the exam is not enough. You also have to study at least four or five days before taking this test. And the reason that you have to study for four or five days is because this is a final exam, which means it covers all the material that we did in this course. So with the previous test, you only needed about two or three days minimum. But for this test, you're going to need at least four or five days. And please understand, that's the minimum amount of time that you need to prepare uh, for this exam. As I said, this is part one. I broke the, the final test into two parts. I don't want you to be able to say that you couldn't do the test because you were uh, too tired or there were just too many problems on the test. So I, I went ahead and broke it into two parts because there's a lot of problems on this test. And uh, as I mentioned uh, before, this course is, uh, is not easy. Beginning algebra is a very, very difficult course. So the final exam is going to be uh, challenging. So uh, again, that's why I broke it into two parts. Um, the final exam, both parts together, uh, part one and part two, are going to be worth 200 points. The previous exams were each worth 100 points, but this final exam, part one and part two together, are going to be worth 200 points. So this first part that you're going to do today is worth 100 points. And I don't recommend that you do both parts in one day. You can if you want to. If you finish this part and you feel that you're ready to, to take the second part, you can do that. But um, I don't really recommend that. <clears throat> but the most important thing to understand is that if you fail this exam, all the work that I've put into designing this exam is for nothing. It's a waste of time. If you fail the exam, all it's going to teach you is that you really don't know the material. It's not going to get you to uh, the next course, the, the next step in your, in your math education. So please don't take this exam without uh, studying for the exam because you're just going to be uh, wasting my time and you're certainly going to be wasting your time. So this test, this first part, like I said, this first part is worth 100 points. There's 25 questions as usual. Each question is worth four points. And right in front of us, we have the rules for grading. The rules are pretty much the same, but there's a few minor things I want to mention. I'm going to require you to, to uh, draw graphs. And when you draw the graphs, I expect you to label the axes. And I want you to label the uh, intervals. So here's the axes. Label the axes. If you don't label the axes, I want you to subtract one-fourth of the points for that particular problem. So if the problem is worth four points, you're going to subtract one point just for not labeling your axes because it's so important to label those axes. Also, I want you to subtract one-fourth of the points if you don't label your intervals. You have to write these little lines here. You see those lines? You have to write those. And you have to make sure that they're roughly the, right, the, the correct distances from each other. You can't make one... You can't make a three here and then make three here in the in the in the other axis. That doesn't make any sense. So they have to be they have to make sense. So you have to write those lines and you have to label them with the number the the, the correct numbers, the correct intervals. If you don't do that, you're gonna have to subtract one fourth of the points. Also, I want you to uh, show the points that you use to graph the lines. If you don't write the points. I'm going to have you subtract one-fourth of the points for that. <clears throat> so just be aware of that. When you graph, you need to show your graph completely and correctly. This is just the way that uh, all teachers require this to be done. And they just love to take off points for not uh, doing all these things, showing all these things on your graph. Also, I want to mention that uh, some of the problems on this test are going to have more than one solution. For example, this problem here, it has more than one solution. It has two solutions. So uh, if you miss a solution, let's say you don't write this solution, or, or it's, it's very likely that you won't, you won't write this solution. Some students forget that this solution, or one of the solutions to this uh, expression or equation is zero. If you miss this solution, I want you to subtract one-fourth of the points from, uh, from that problem. There's one more thing I want to mention. You might get something like... Uh, 
when you do those when you do these uh, root problems you might get 5 root 7 over 10 if you leave it in this form it's not in reduced form you have to reduce it to root 7 over 2 so if you don't reduce this is the correct answer but it's not reduced if you don't if you write this as your answer then I'm going to have you subtract one fourth of the points for that problem so that's another uh, thing to 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 keep in mind you need to reduce all of your fractions all right so all that said this test is like all other tests in the sense that it's going to take uh, between one and two hours. Clear all your stuff off your desk. You should have no computer. No, uh, You can have your com computer in front of you if you're using a digital notebook, but don't look on the internet. Don't look on your notes. Don't, look on, uh, don't use textbooks. No help from anybody. No help from your, your uh, uh, parents or whoever. You need to do this on your own. And you should have a timer in front of yourself. All right, so here's the test. Go ahead and take screenshots of those first two pages. And a screenshot of the last page. So go ahead and take the test. Pause this video. And when you're done, I'll talk about how to uh, grade your test. So go ahead and take the test, pause the video, and I'll see you when you come back. All right, we're back. Here's the, the answers. <clears throat> so go ahead and get a screenshot of those answers. And the last page, get a screenshot of that. So go ahead and uh, grade your test, and remember, you're going to want to get a screenshot of uh, the rules to uh, grade your test, and go ahead and proceed, grade your, your test there, and again, I just want to mention, you can see that there are, are multiple answers for some of these problems. If you uh, leave out one of the answers, then subtract one-fourth of the points for that problem, and of course, if you don't write any of the, the answers, you want to subtract uh, half of the points for that problem. Also, I want to mention that uh, in some of these problems, uh, you, you, can, you can write different forms. So notice I put the negative in different places on number 5. So as you grade number 5, keep that in mind. It doesn't matter where you put it. <clears throat> um, you can also distribute the negative y to the 2x plus 9y if you want to, so that, that's not wrong if you do it that way. Um, notice that I'm writing the denominators in a lot of these in uh, factored form. You can distribute 8c cubed into the c plus 1 if you want, and that's not wrong. Um, you can Again, you can leave this in factored form, or you can write it as x squared minus 4. Either way, it's, it's the correct answer. Again, I have factored form here. You can use FOIL to get, go ahead and expand this if you want. Uh, if you did that, then it's, it's still correct. And what else do we have here? Again, I have factored form. You can go ahead and uh, distribute if you want to. It's still correct. And what I mean by that is 4c times c is 4c squared, and 4c times 1 is 4c. So if you wrote this in the denominator, then that's still correct. Don't, don't uh, subtract any points for that. <clears throat> you should have no roots in these denominators. If you have roots in the denominators, then you didn't rationalize the denominator. And again, these should all these fractions should all be reduced. Let's see what else do we have here. Um, again, label everything. You should you should have your x and y axis labeled. Your axes, and in this problem, you need to use these exact points because I wanted to, you to use the uh, y-intercept and the slope. So this is the y-intercept. I want you to write that point. If you don't have that point, then you didn't do the problem correctly. And if you use the slope, then you should have this point. If you didn't write that point, then you didn't do it correctly. And you should have all your intervals labeled. With this problem, same thing. I want you to use these points. If you did the problem the way I wanted you to do it, you should have uh, those points on the graph. You should label those, have them marked, 
Now this problem, again, you should have these exact same points. I asked you to use the uh, x and y intercepts to graph the line. So you need to use these particular points. If you don't have those points, then you didn't do it correctly. Now on this on this y value here, you can use negative 5 fourths. That's OK. If you wrote negative 5 fourths, it's still correct. And on this problem, you can use any points you want to. So if your points are not exactly the same as my points, that's OK. As long as the graph uh, looks correct, and as long as those points work in the, that equation, then uh, any points on the line will do. You're, you're, you did it correctly. So that's, uh, that's the exam. And uh, go ahead and grade that. And when you're done grading the exam, we'll talk about how to uh, interpret your grade. So pause the video, grade your exam, and when you come back, uh, we'll talk about how to proceed. All right, we're back. So I don't really need to tell you this, I guess, because it's just the same situation as the uh, previous exams. If you got 90 to 100, that's an A. That means you know the material really well. If you got 80 to 89, that means you know the material, but there's a few minor things that you need to work on. 70 to 79, that means uh, you know the material, but there's some major things that you need to go back and work on. And if you got anything below a 70, that means you don't know the material. And 99% uh, of the time, you just didn't do the homework completely and correctly, and you certainly didn't study for the exam. Remember, you needed to study four to five days minimum before taking this exam. So hopefully you did well. If you didn't do well, obviously you're going to probably have problems going into part two. Um, this test, again, was worth 100 points. Part two will be worth another 100 points. So if you didn't do as well as you, as you thought you should do, then you should probably uh, take a couple days to study for part two. Um, but you can, uh, again, if you want to take part two today, you can do that. But you might want to go ahead and just rest because, again, part two is going to be pretty, pretty involved. It's going to be more difficult than part one, I believe. So that said, if you pass, good job. I'm proud of you. If you didn't pass, you're going to have to open up your textbook, and you're just going to have to go back and do tons and tons of problems. And there's no way for me to give you my endorsement because I'm not going to write another test. So just do tons and tons of problems so that you can go on to the, the, the next course. Anyway, that said, I'll look forward to seeing you uh, when we uh, in the class where you take part two of the final exam.